Hello and welcome to what is a 3D print focused video. Uh, I'm going to be covering what is essentially just my newest 3D printer, um, but I want to show you guys what it's capable of and just the things I can do with it now. So you can see here the just the incredible texture that's on this little head sculpt. Um, I didn't make this sculpt, this is just one from Thingiverse that I was sent as a commission project. And you can see how nice the texture is on it. That has come from this. This is the Elegoo Mars 5 Ultra. Uh, they haven't asked me to make this video. They haven't asked me to promote it in any way. They just sent it to me to use for the project I do. And you can see here it's running through its own checklist of stuff to do. And this is essentially all it does. You take it out of the box, you set it up, you plug it in. And this is all the setup you have for it. It, it sets itself up. It's incredible. This is one of the easiest like beginner friendly printers I've ever had. You can see you've got the AI camera there as well, which can do time lapses of your prints. It's also meant to do detection of failures and resin shortages. You can see there the self-leveling bed. I will cover more of this as we get through the video. So now straight into Tinkercad, again, my go-to for just simple little 3D models that I work on. And I've gone for the original Iron Man Mark II hologram for the repulsor test that he has in Iron Man 1. You can see there's a few details here and there, it's mainly just set to fit the SHF Iron Man arm, or Tony Stark arm I should say. A fairly basic model, made mostly of cylinders, uh, and then there's a notch cut out for where the thumb goes because on his palm he's got the thumb folded in. And then this is the little head thing he has in Iron Man 3, and you can see there's just a headband with a few bits of tech coming off of it. Very sci-fi. And then he's obviously got the hologram version where he's got the full heads up display on it. And I've done that as well. Just a simple little addition to the existing model I'd already made. And you can see the hologram part is just the separate piece that I made that I then grouped together to make one for the 3D printing. And then here is the prototype Mark 42 I don't know what you'd call it. This is the forearm, basically, that flies obviously towards him and then takes over his forearm. Uh, and this is just the like claps down version you see on his workbench when he's getting ready to test it. I do want to make the legs at some point, but for the time being, I've just made the arms, which you can see here, because there are fingers on the inside, I have made a right and a left, but if you're facing it down, it's not really going to be noticeable anyway. So there's a new system for kind of network sending. I think it's called Chi2 Manager. A very nice user interface. I haven't figured out how to use it with my older printers, so hopefully that's a thing that comes in soon because I can currently only use it with the Mars 5 Ultra. But you can see here it's searching for printers. You can see the Mars 5 Ultra that's already set in the right. And you can see the printers that they're working on adding and what's already capable on it. You can also then see the printer itself and you can check the camera. Uh, you can do surveillance of your prints as it's running. And it's an extremely high definition camera. It works really, really well. And obviously, like I said, you can time lapse your different prints. Now, this is what I wanted to use to test the actual abilities of this printer, what it's capable of detail wise. Uh, layer height wise i didn't even increase the layer height this is just set on its like base settings you can see i did miss a tooth so uh, it's not the printer's fault that he's missing a tooth in the final version and now taking the lid off while it's printing you can see how that resin vat works with the tilt release technology it peels away from the print itself to i suppose prevent failures um i've not had a print failure with this printer yet so it works <laughs> And now bringing in the original one, obviously this is the scale I designed it for. You can see all the detail on this scale. And again, it's detailed to be this scale. So now bringing in the miniature version, uh, which you can see is a hell of a lot smaller. And yet somehow still has all of the detail. Except of course that tooth that I forgot to add support for. And this blew me away. I knew it would be detailed. I knew it would have a load of texture to it. I didn't think it would capture every little detail that I had sculpted and then managed to print it in such a small form. 
If you look really closely, there is also the multi-layered pupil that I did, um, and a couple of the little wrinkles in the rest of the eyeball. I'm still struggling to wrap my head around how detailed this came out. No print layers except the very top, which you can see if you look for them there. Which again, I didn't change it, this is just the stock settings. But no layer lines throughout the rest of it. And again, all I've done is put a coat of primer on this. You can see I've not even attempted to remove the little like spots from the support material. Now bringing that Boba Fett helmet in from the beginning of the video, uh, I, you can see I painted it, this is for Finn Motion. Highly recommend you check out his channels. He's got TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. I'll link them in the description. So this is a piece he commissioned me. He wanted a Boba Fett helmet for 112th scale mm -hmm. with a custom mm -hmm. paint job. Um, of my choosing. So I went for these colours. You can see I've also sprayed my nails with the same colour and the same gradient. And the fact that even with all this paint on, you can still see that detail. It's not washed any of it out. There's the odd little hint of layer line here and there because it's a spherical object that's fairly flat in some areas. So you're going to get that. But the fact that this doesn't look 3D printed, incredible. Now onto the Iron Man stuff that i had been making uh, for quite a while now, I've just not got around to putting a video together for it. You can see first things first, there's the headgear that I've been working on. Printed in the clear blue that was sent to me with the printer. And you can see I've just tried to pick up whatever details were in the film. There's obviously this pompt here on the back. But the print quality of this is unreal. And to get all this detail with a clear resin, which for anyone who doesn't know, clear resins won't pick up detail as well as, say, a grey or a black resin will. So to have all the detail still at this quality with a clear resin, uh, I... <laughs> this is... If you had told me this is the quality of prints I'd be getting when I bought my first Elegoo Mars, like the original series Elegoo Mars, about six years ago, um, I probably wouldn't have believed you. But this is insane. And these aren't even like the highest quality models that I've made. But the fact that there's no print issues with them. So happy to see this. Uh, I will definitely be using this for projects moving forwards. This is going to be my go-to printer, I imagine now. Now moving on to that Mark II... Uh, I suppose the Mark 1 repulsor setup but for the Mark 2 that he was working on and I have painted it in the fluorescent green spray which working with UV torch it does glow it doesn't show up very well in this lighting so what I should really do is turn off my studio lighting so that I can show it better because it's kind of just picking up the UV more than it's picking up the actual green so moving him back so it's a little bit of a better view of what it would look like and shining the torch from a helpful angle. You can see how brightly this green glows. Um, this is just the Tamiya fluorescent green. Uh, and I will be adding these to the Etsy shop at some point in the next month or so. I'm moving house, so it's all a bit up in the air as to when I'm coming back fully on Etsy. This is obviously the Mark 42 forearm piece printing that clear blue and you can see there's like no pixels on the outer surface of that at all. Some incredible detail in there. And then painted up with a chrome and then a gloss red and then obviously the gunmetal and the gold bits. Uh, this gold isn't a very good match, it was just kind of the only thing I had in my paint box at the time. But now if you are interested in owning the Mars 5 Ultra or the Mars 5 for yourself, the Mars 5 Ultra is currently £232 on Elegoo Mars UK. Uh, it's estimated to ship around August 21st, so later this month. There will be a link in the description to the Elegoo Mars website for the Mars 5 and the Mars 5 Ultra below. Again, they've not paid me, they've not asked for this. This is just how much I like this printer and I want to share with you the low cost, incredible ability of this printer. Because I've had a lot of questions about what printer I use, what printers I recommend. This is the one. Easy setup, incredible quality, just a powerhouse of a printer. So yeah, if you're looking for a new printer or a beginner mm -hmm. printer mm -hmm. and you've got a 
£230 budget, that's what its current pre-order price is, uh, or below, because there is, I think, the Mars 5 just general is about 160 I think, for pre-order. Again, incredibly low prices for the quality you're getting. Now, this is just another 3D file that I downloaded from Thingiverse. I can't remember what the file was. This is just a Mark 7 statue that I shrunk way down uh, to kind of create a little hologram effect. And you can actually see the eyes and the little earmuff bit, which again, printed at such a small scale and in clear blue. Uh, I've not received like this level of quality print in clear blue before. So again, sorry if I'm gushing, um, but setting him back up to put him away, this figure does kind of benefit from having something to cover the face because he doesn't look much like RDJ at all, uh, which is part of the reason I made this. Also because I feel like for an Iron Man 3 figure, it could have come with more Iron Man 3 related accessories. They didn't really include a lot when this figure released. So just making a few little bits for a figure that I personally love, but not a big fan of the head sculpt. Uh, now for size reference, I'm gonna bring the Kako Demon back in. I don't know how clear it is how small it is. Uh, I know my hands are quite big, so it makes stuff look small in general. But if you've got a 112 scale figure for reference, it is about the same size as most 112 scale heads, so pretty small. Uh, now I'm going to bring in a project I've been working on in the background for a fair while now. Some of you may recognise him, some of you may not, that's completely fine. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one.